Welcome back Happy Fabricators. In this video we're going to be making an aluminum merge collector for a twin turbo kit. Okay, so this isn't necessarily going to be a how-to video because every single one of these things that I do is slightly different and I tend to learn something along the way. So I'm just going to drag you guys along and we'll see if we both can learn something. So I have two two inch 45 degree bends here. We've got a two and a half to three inch merge cone and we've got our aluminum V-band. The only restrictions that I'm working with here is height. Um, my overall height, I believe not including the V-band, has to be under six inches to clear the application of the vehicle. So that will make this a little bit more difficult, but I'm pretty sure we can make it happen. Okay, so I just want to give you guys a quick example of the vision that I'm having so that we're kind of all on the same page. What I'm thinking is we're going to have something that does sort of like that and then sort of like that and then our cone is going to tuck up in here as far as we can that total height restriction so the first thing we're going to start on is we are going to cut our 45s and get these coped into each other the way that I feel that they're going to work best. Whenever I'm working on a project like this, I like to lay out a piece of paper or a chunk of aluminum to lay my aluminum pieces on because you're going to minimize the chance so that they get scratched if you've just got a steel fab table. So in an ideal world, we want these things to be parallel and as close to each other as possible. But realistically, we need to have certain parameters to be able to fabricate them in any sort of quality fashion. And one big thing in that is being able to get in there with your TIG torch or whatever machine that you're welding with. So that's what I'm going to use to determine the width of this. So I know that my TIG torch is about 7 eighths of an inch just under wide. I could put a thinner one on there, but I'm just going to go with this. So because that's about 7 eighths, I'm going to run this inside gap at about an inch apart and that's going to give me lots of room to be able to weld all the way around it. So what I find is the easiest way to go about that is since we want an inch total distance, I'm going to take half that distance, which is half inch, I've got a half inch block here, and we're going to lay that square up against our piece of material, and then I'm going to take a ruler and pinch it up against it, and then we can scribe that line right on our ruler on both pieces. And what this is going to do is lock in our center distance and also ensure that we have, we have these cuts parallel to our tubes. So once again, we are using clean aluminum, so I'm going to mask off my fence before I go to cut this so we know that we're not going to scratch our aluminum. And we're just going to cut this on the little porta band here. If you have a horizontal bandsaw, that would probably do better, but I don't have one of these. So just got my little bandsaw. So another thing you'll notice here is I did not cut right up to my line. I left about a 30 second of an inch and that will just allow me to grind back to exactly where I want it. You may want to leave a little more than a 30 second. I just know that that's my comfortable margin of error with my experience. So if you have less experience, maybe air that out just a little further. Okay, so once we got our fit up done, we got our two little smokestacks here. I'm going to take a one, two, three block and wrap some tape around it so we don't scratch our tubes up. We can set that guy on there so that we know that we are maintaining our one inch gap all the way back. So I'm going to say that probably 65% of welding is good preparation. So we're going to take and clean all of our sharpie marks off because those could contaminate our weld. We're going to clean any of the oils from my hands off of it, anything we can do to give that welding an advantage. Along with cleaning your material, always clean your rod off. It's never clean, even if it's been in a container. This stuff just came out of a covered container, and as you can see, there's still crud on it. So my current TIG welding setup, we're going to be using a CK Worldwide torch. We have a number six gas lens set up on it. I'm going to be running about 100 hertz on my frequency and I'm going to drop my balance down to probably closer to 45%. I usually run in the 30% range, but on this thin wall tubing, sometimes there's coatings on it and stuff like that that 
you don't know about or cheaper material and so it's just nice to have a little bit more cleaning action there. Another thing I like to do is ball my tip. Now I know there's going to be people say that this is totally unnecessary on a inverter welder and they are correct. But I believe that as long as you get good results you do you. And so the way I'm going to ball that tip is I'm going to crank my balance up to 100% EP and allow that to just kind of ball up that tungsten real quick. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got this thing welded together. I went ahead and chopped it off in the chop saw, so we're a little bit shorter and easier to work with. As you can see, I did not weld all the way around this guy. That is because this merge piece is going to sit up in here quite a ways, because we want this to be kind of a nice, short, stout little piece, something like that. So no sense welding it all the way around if we're going to cut it out. Next thing I'm going to do is just kind of start creeping up on this thing and see how far in there we can get it. Okay, so I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I messed up on this one. And I don't have the material right here to make another one. I cut on the wrong side of my line, and in this case, that was just enough to matter. We're not gonna have quite enough to get in here. But I think I've got a solution that I think will actually look even better. What we're gonna do is we're gonna oval out the bottom of this guy and make it fit this shape a little better anyway. So let's give it a go. Okay, so that was a fun little project. Turned out pretty good. And this will go into the rest of the system that I might be building later. Don't know if I'm gonna do a video on it or not. But I think it actually ended up turning out better because I made that mistake, because I was forced to oval it. And because of that, we're not gonna have any harsh transitions inside and I think it'll flow even better. So thanks for watching guys. If you're interested, I will leave links to the tools that I used in this project down below. If you're interested in more fabrication content, Check out our channel down below. We'll leave a playlist of videos for you right here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and go build something, guys.